Good afternoon, everyone from Dunrobin Ranch in Lolo, Montana. I'm excited to invite our great friend and master horseman, Brandon Carpenter, back. Hi, Brandon. Hey, Suzanne. Hey, everyone. Hope everyone's hey. doing well today. Yeah, you've had an exciting week, I understand, with the beginning of calving and another snowstorm. Well, yeah, exciting is one word to put for something that's extraordinary. This is not necessarily exciting. It's uh, it's frustrating. Let's put it that way. Yeah. And it's hard, yeah. Yeah, dramatic, we've got a lot going on. Dramatic, for sure. Yeah. Well, let's talk about that after you're finished working with Nicole. I see Nicole's out there with Augie right now, and I know she got an inner tube to uh, tie up uh, Jax afterwards, so we'd like to have you spend uh, just a few minutes with Jax after she's finished with Augie. And uh, she's just doing a great job out here with everything. So thank you, Nicole. And uh, that I'm going to step out. <laughs> All right. Thanks, Suzanne. Hey, Nicole, how are you doing? I'm doing good. How are you, Brandon? I'm warm. I'm dry. I'm not hungry. <laughs> <laughs> but I am tired as hell, I'll tell you. <laughs> Get you some sleep. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I used to be able to do this all night long, sleep for a couple hours, go to work. Oof. Those days are long, long gone, so I'm uh, I'm not the same person I was before. <laughs> all right, well, show us what, you're, what you got here. We're playing with Augie. And did you, yeah. did you get any work on him this week? Uh, not so much. Um, it's still been pretty icy, so there's yeah. not. I'm I'm a little limited. <laughs> on yeah, what no, I, can I, do. I I com I completely understand. We have the same situation over here where uh, we've got snow and ice, and then snow on top of the ice, and it's treacherous. So yeah. I'm I'm not doing any training yeah. on on the stallion. I need to be working on, and um, <laughs> it's it's frustrating. But you know, you can't change that. You just have to wait. By June, it'll be gone. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. Well, it looks to me like you've got the inner tube there for Jax later on. Is that mm -hmm. is that what I'm seeing in front of uh, Augie's face? Yeah, that's the the tube right there. I stole it from my parents. Um, it's usually what we use to float the river, but <laughs> um, yeah. <laughs> well, you you might want to get a new one come spring or summer then. <laughs> <laughs> this might put a hole yeah. in it. Uh, yeah. Well, have you got a small tarp? Let's 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 uh, start over with Augie. Yeah. We were last week, and uh, see if what okay. he remembers. And I'm sure he remembers. It's whether or not he wants to admit he remembers. Right. <laughs> Ooh, it sounds like a lighter one. Oh yeah. Oh. Very Not bad. good. That's a really good size. What do we think? Okay. Like to nibble on it. So why don't you go ahead and untie him? And I know where it, it limits where you're at, but um right there behind you, is that a little bit more open spot you can work? Gives you more room? Yeah. Yeah, let's go there if you can. And the camera, I think we can follow you up no problem and Get you on a little bit drier ground where you you can kind of stop him. Looks like yeah, it looks like it's kind of a little dry yeah. hump there, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, I do have Jax in a stall right there, so he might be a distraction, but that's, that's okay. That's okay. Well, you know, distractions are good things. Yeah. I like to work through those distractions. So, uh, in fact, as I build in distractions, just so that nothing is nothing is unplanned. You know, uh, you're going up a trail somewhere mm -hmm. with a horse. And you can't control what's there or coming at you or what you're getting closer to or how the horse perceives it. So right. trying to put as many unexpected yeah. things in front of them as you can is always just good training. Oh, yeah. Go ahead and throw that up over his back and his neck. Just flop it. There you go. Good. Yep. Now, just take the center of it, because it's right there at his neck, and if you can pick it up there, mm -hmm. it's kind of split in two a little bit. It kind of shortens it for you. Now you can swing that yeah. and, and just kind of flog him with it. Just throw it over his back. You know, obviously, this is not heavy enough that it can hurt him. It, you just can't hurt him with it. 
You want me to do what with it? So, so, so you, okay, uh, go ahead and fold it back where you, like you had it. Okay. Okay, so now so now it's going to be, it's got a fold in the front side of it. And see where uh-huh. it's draped over his neck? Right there's about the center yeah. of it, right? So just grab that at the center yeah. of that fold and just hang on right there. And now you've got, uh, if you pull it off, just hang on to it at that spot. You pull it off. Now you've got a little bit shorter or uh, folded up tarp that you can pull off, and then you can just flog him with the whole thing. So pull it towards you. Just okay. pull it off of him. Hang on to it. There you go. And now just just go ahead and just start tossing out on him and hitting him with it and touching him with it. There you go. Yes, like that. Good job. There we go. Yes. And that's the whole the good job. That's the whole idea, making him stand still while you do this. And this is all, again, remedial stuff. But remember, he's been through this, but Augie tends to think that he doesn't have to do what Augie doesn't want to do. And Augie is right. dead wrong. <laughs> and you're the one that's proven it to him. Now, he may, I see he's putting his head down, make him pick his head up and pay attention instead of what he's doing is he's basically telling you, no, nah, I'm going to do something else. I'm going right. to just ignore you. And there are times where they might reach down, smell your boot, and then and then bite you or nibble on it. That's the same thing. They're just kind of, yeah, it looks just a little bit of aggression that they're trying to uh, assert. And on another horse, that would work. Uh, look at him. I think he's chewing and licking a little bit, isn't he? Yeah, he was a bit. Good. Pick his head up. Don't let him. Just make him stand there. Just, just touch him. There you go. Pick that head up. Make him stand in place. Good. And when he starts to drop that head, the moment you feel him start to drop it, correct him. And he can look at you all he wants. That's fine. Okay. We, yeah, there you go. And he, he puts his head forward. Gets tired of looking at it. Fine. Excellent. Yes, there you go. Good, good correction. Very nice job. This is a whole lot easier to do with this size tarp than it is that big one, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, very much. <laughs> <laughs> I told you I'm going to give you swimmer shoulders. <laughs> hey, good job, buddy. Good. Now just throw that, yeah, just keep working that up his up his neck and over his head. You may try to step back from him. There you go. Very good. So when you go over his head, just slow it down and then just just let it just kind of pull it over his face and let it drop. There you go. Let him smell it, that's fine. If he's curious about smelling it, that's okay. Mm-hmm. Had enough. He's interested. Good. Go right back to it again. Very good. And this is actually some, is, this is not like we're doing this as a remedial exercise. Uh, it is a little bit, but we're also progressing on to, you know, if he's going to pack some signs on a, uh, pack saddle or something like that, we can have some floppy things. Flags, that all of that kind of stuff. We're just reiterating that this floppy, noisy stuff is not bad. It's not something that's going to hurt. Very good. I like that chewing. Again, that oh, look at that big old blink. Good. So he's is just this is just more in depth training. We might do, of course, some some more of this. Oh, well, we can't. We got to. Not not that we might. We've got to to make sure that he doesn't move. Whatever we do. Yeah. So if you want, when you when you were throwing that over his back like that and under his belly, throw it over his back and then just let it fall onto his off side. There you go. Now you can reach between his legs and pull it. Let him smell it. Oh. Very good. Yep. Okay. Good job. Very good. Very good. Making him making him stand where you want him to. Nice. Oh, he didn't like that. Tough. <laughs> And back him up, and quicker, yeah, quicker's quicker's better. Quicker's more important because that means he has to comply immediately to you instead of having that in his head that oh, I can fight this a little bit. Yeah. Oh yeah, look at that hind end. He's just a little. 
It's a little snotty about all of this. Oh. There you go. Pretty close. There. Now, it doesn't matter. You can reach between his front legs or between all of his legs and roll it under his belly. It doesn't matter because it's all got to happen. We'll do it all. Very good. Okay. Yeah, moving on to a little bit more dry so that you're not standing in the water. Okay. And yeah, back just keep up. doing. Yeah, no, I was going to say, just keep doing what you're doing and make him back up and move. Good. Very good. Nice. Oh, yeah. Oh, ho, ho, ho. Now just grab the front of that. Yeah, just now just grab it in the front, in front of his feet. There, now as you pull it, pull back. So it wraps around his feet a little bit as you pull it. Because that way he feels it on his offside foot, around the front, and on his near side foot all at the same time. You're just kind of wrapping okay. it, rolling around it. And what we want to do by doing that, it, it increased the pressure on his body, namely his feet, but it also increases the pressure on his mind. And that's the whole point is that we put pressure on him and he doesn't move in spite of the pressure being there because it's, it's not pressure we want him to move from. We're asking him to stand and comply. There we go. That's all right. Let it go. Very good. Very good. Yeah, he just needs much more of that. Push him over towards it. Yeah, he's not going to. He's not going to want to step towards it because he wants to avoid it. So very good. Good job. Right. You're doing great. Perfect, Nicole. That was absolutely perfect. You didn't let him go forward, and he didn't come towards you. He had to go away from you, and he's right close back to it. You could probably reach under there. It's almost right under him, right? Yeah. Yeah, so just be careful. Very good. Yeah. And, when you, and when you do that again, if you want to thread that between his front legs when you pull it through, do that too. Okay. <clears throat> there, he's finally cocking a hind leg, so now he's starting to give up. That's good. Excellent. There you go. Now pull it back towards his hind legs. So pull it around that leg. Yep, just go to the back and pull. Okay, you can do that too. Yeah, that's fine. There you go. Yeah, there is nothing that you can do is that's going to be wrong. If you can think of something creative and you want to, you want to kind of saw that thing around the leg. Be have at it. That's that's excellent. We're okay. we're we're, get, we're going to get there later. But if you can, if you'll do it and you're thinking about it, go for it. No problem. Do it. You just don't want to do it too early when you know that they're going to move. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Yep. Oh, good. Very good. Yeah, good boy. There you go. Good. Yep. Like it. Good boy. Good job. Now just don't let it fall off the other side this time. Just kind of let it hang there. Yeah. And then there you go. Now let now just kind of lift it. You lift your side up so the other side comes down, and then you can be able to reach under it and do the same thing. Just keep pushing. There you go. Now grab underneath of him, and now just pull that up against his belly and pull it through, and then pick it right up. Make it make it make a circle around him. Now lift it. Keep lifting. Lift, 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 and pull. And lift, lift, lift. There you go. Right back over the top of it. Yes. Very good. Very good. I see his little chin is still a little bit tight. <laughs> but, he's, but at least he's complying. That's good. Yeah. All right. Do, it, do that again. There you go. Good boy. I love these. These are really cheaply made. They're, they're not very good tarps at all. But that's to your advantage. Yeah. It makes so much noise, and they're so crispy. Yeah, they and they don't shed water. But that's not what we want them for. They'll they'll work for a little while, but not very long. There you go. Very good. Now just kind of just kind of rattle it and shake it. Yes, I like to do that unexpectedly because he was kind of relaxed. 
And just look how loose your line is. Very good. And he's not moving. Excellent. Now do the same thing that you were doing, only move that tarp back towards his flank and lift it up through his flanks. Same exact way. Like between his legs? Or? Well, you, you see where your you see where the front of it is up by his front shoulders or front front feet, where it's hanging on the other side. Mm-hmm. Okay, so just now pick it up and pull it, but now move move it back towards his flank. There you go. Now lift at his flank. Okay. Yep. Good. Same thing. Same reason. Here he he tightened oh. up a little bit, and he, yeah, let's move him. Yeah, put it on him and move him back. Okay. You notice how when you were pulling it, he tightened, he tightened his muscles up. Very good. Oh, this is this is absolutely killing him. This is good. We're we're seeing some, some happiness on our part. Very good. Good. There you go. But I like what you're now. Stop right there. Let's. I want to talk about something with you. Very very good. What you're doing is kind of intuitive, and mm-hmm. and but or not intuitive. But what you're doing is really important. What you could do is instead of um, getting on the other side of him like you were doing on his offside and pushing him over, you're doing that, and you're then you're walking back around to start over. You're not just doing uh, all your work from that side now because it's convenient to hold him there. You're bringing coming back around and allowing him. To move off if he wants, if he wants to be bad, but you're you're just doing it and you're picking up and going right back to it from the same side from which he moved, and that's really an important distinction to remember that you start over or you continue with what you left off with where it didn't work because they need to be able to finish that task and everything that you're asking for instead of shortcutting it for you and making it easy. A lot of times this training mm-hmm. is not as easy as it as it seems because. You're doing all of the work, and you're and you're making them comply, even though it's hard. And so, I just wanted to point out what you're doing there is really, really good. Uh, and I don't know if it was intuitive for you or felt right, but it's not intuitive for a lot of people. They'll they'll just kind of kind of get what they can get instead of making him do exactly what you want. So, really good job, good job, mm-hmm. really good job. Well, thank you. <laughs> all right, so now go back to your tarp, making stand. <laughs> Yeah. Good. Very I good. Push those feet back. Excellent. Okay. Make yeah, those feet stand oh. right back where they're supposed to be. Yes. Good. That's a really good placement for you. Yeah. Good. There you go. Stay right there. Oh, look at him give up. We like that. <laughs> Praise him for that. Praise him for not moving. Good. Now pick your tarp. Now pick your tarp up and go to go to work on it again. Oh boy! Excellent. Very good. Good job. Good correction. Very good correction. <laughs> he is not liking this. He is frustrated. Good. There you go. Hey, good job. There, we go. there you go. Right back under his flank again. There. He didn't tighten up that time. He wanted to move, but he didn't tighten up. Very good. Good boy. Excellent. You made a huge stride there just you know, on your second try. Very good. Yep. Repetition wins the race. Let's keep going again. Yeah. Yeah, good job. Good. That time he didn't he didn't even uncock his foot. He's standing there resting on a leg. Excellent. Very good. All right. Now, let's set something up. Let's just try something a little bit here because we're going to need to go to the other side and do everything on that side as well. But you see where that, you see where his tail's at? 
Yeah. Can you reach under his tail, around his, behind him, and grab that tarp, kind of set it over there? And so what you're going to do is kind of push it over, and then you're going to wrap that tarp around his hind end and under his tail and draw it to you. But don't not tight under his tail his first time, but low, down around his hocks, but it is under his tail. Does that make sense okay. to you? Um, I think so. Did you, yeah. you want me to just, like, pull it back? Yeah, pull it back, but now reach it. Re- yeah, but re- no, just pull it back, but now reach under his tail and behind it like you're okay. scratching his butt all the way back. And then grab that mm-hmm. tarp and let it fall oh. off of him. There you go. Now push it up. Help, help push that you. tarp up on this side. There you go. Now pull it straight back. Yeah. Yes. Now now just walk right, forward. Buddy. Don't let it. Good. Very good. That's all right. He moved off a little bit. That's okay. But you see how important that one is too, because that's a lot of pressure. Yeah. For you. You wanted to move off, so let's let's continue to do that a few more times, and we'll get to with that at one point where we've got his tail over the top of the tarp, and you're going to be pulling really close right under his tail root, and uh, we want him to stand nice and still for that and not move. There you go. Very good. Good. Yeah. Very good. Nice job. Let's do one thing. Put him on his back. Now let's turn him about ninety degrees where you were before with him. You kind of you kind of moved off after that uh, uh, movement when you first did it under his tail. But let's let's move him back. Yeah. Now. And that's okay. We were just he was just he was just moving away from all that pressure. And that's a lot of pressure to begin with on him. There we go. Yeah. Now let's do that again. Let's go under his tail. Again. Yeah, there we go. Look at that. Very we good. Yeah, praise him for that. That's excellent. Good job. Do it again. Yep, just keep that tarp moving. Good. Boy. Now lift it up a little bit tighter under his tail this time as you pull through. There you go. Yep. Yep. Very good. Now let's see if we can get it. You kind of slipped back under below his tail a little bit. But let's see if we can kind of get that yeah. up under his tail. He might, and he'll clamp it down. There's no doubt. I mean, that, that's kind of, it's cold and it uh, feels funny. So <laughs> I, I believe if I had a tail, I'd clamp it down too. Good. Very good. Now look, he's, oh. look, at, look how much movement you've got in your rope. It's loose and you're flopping yeah. all over. Very good. Very good. All right. Yeah. Now let's just pull that thing forward and just drag it right over the top of his head and off the front of his face. Yeah. Here we go. He raised his head up to where you couldn't get to it, so we got to start over. There we go. Yeah, make sure it's really draped over. And there you go. Good. That's perfect. Hey, good job. Not bad. Okay, he stepped back. He raised his head up and he stepped back. So we got to fix that. You do what you did yeah. is absolutely perfect. And I will, at times I like to do that and then just stop and let them be blind underneath it. After a while, once they really get to trust you and, and understand that nothing bad is going to happen to them. They should just stand there with that thing flopped on them right over their head and not move. Oh, okay. There you go. Nice and slow. So you kind of stop to relieve the pressure. Very good. Very good. That's all right. Not bad. I think he can see with his off eyes, so that's what kind of stopped him. That's okay. Thank <laughs> you.
There you go. Yeah. Good job. Just talk to him. Talk to him and reassure him. Good boy. You got it. You're okay. Good. Oh, he actually stepped forward. I don't know if you could see that or not, but he stepped back and you talked to him, killed him, and he and then he stepped forward so he was back in this neutral position. Very good. Yeah. He came into the pressure. Very, very good. You can nibble on it. <laughs> yeah, that's fine. There Don't care. Go. Got it. Good boy. Oh. Yep, backed up. Yeah, you might want to str- uh, yeah, shorten your line up just a little bit so that you can correct him if he's supposed to back up. Good job. You got it. Very that good. Blew off your face there. <laughs> he, he didn't raise his head near as high that time either, Nicole. So that's very good. Yeah, let him let him smell it a little bit. He's curious about it. Let him look at it. Let him smell it. Very good. Yeah. Good. Nice. There you go. Good boy. Very good. Let's get one more out of him. One more success story like this on his head, and then let's go to his his tail end, and we'll start dragging that down through behind his uh, or between his hind legs as well, kind of like you did on the front. Very good. Nice. Very good. There you go. Yep. Yeah, I want to shorten your shorten your uh yeah. lead up a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> you kind of let it slide through your hand at times. You forget about it. <laughs> That's all right. No. <laughs> and then you're like, oh crap! I wish I had my my grip up a little closer to his face. That wasn't bad. Let's do one more on that. Right. That way we can correct. Yeah. It. He needs it because he needs the correction. There you go. Oh, very good. Good job. Very good. <laughs> very there you good. Go. Good job. <laughs> I like I like how you, you you felt him start to move, so you stopped what you were doing and just let him kind of stand there. You took the pressure off. There's still a lot of pressure there, but not as much by just as moving it. So that was very good. Let him let him get used to it. He relaxed, and then you started again, and you praised him for it. Very good. Good job. So let's just walk over to his hind end, walk on that end of him, throw that over his hips, drop it, and then drag it through between his hind legs. Okay. And then we'll, we'll get a couple of success stories out of that, and then we'll go to the other side. He's not moving. That's fine. He's lifting that foot up, but he's not moving. That's okay. Just keep doing what you're doing. Very good. There you go. Good job. Very good. I'm liking it. He's, he's still relaxed. Notice his chin. Look at his lower lip. 
that is not tight like it was. Mm -hmm. His eyes are soft. He's about half fallen asleep. Very good. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> well, not. I think you might have. You just might have pulled him a little too, a little too much. Yeah, that was my bad. <laughs> yeah, yep, you overcorrected. That's okay. That's all right because you get an opportunity to do that with him too. So that's not all is lost okay. there. Yeah, over. And we're going to need to work on that because he does not want to step. He, you're, you're doing great. Yeah. Exactly. That's fine. You know, you're doing the right thing. We're just changing. We're just changing what we're going to have to train for a little bit right there. That's all right. Make him step I'm around it. One step, buddy. There you go. Yep. <laughs> you're almost there. Yep. That's fine. Look how little he's fighting you, though. He's not trying to drag you around or push you around. He's putting a little pressure right. on you. But he is he is complying. He's not liking it. There you go. You see, you're, you're making headway with him. Keep the pressure up. Make him move. Make him, make him step. There we go. And we'll just make, yeah, make him side pass all the way over that thing if you want. Doesn't matter. Okay. Be, yeah, just keep going. You're halfway there. Okay. 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 There you go. There we go. Good. Very good. Oh. There'd have been, yeah, I mean, a lot of success there, but the one thing we need to work on then is just so that he doesn't swing his hind end around, that he side passes over it. But that we'll get to that. That's yeah. okay. That's good. Very good. You kept at it. And you didn't blow things up. And he's not going to die, even though he thinks he is. Yeah, he does. He's going he's gonna to die of compliance. <laughs> There you, there you go. go. Try one more time now. Stand there. Throw that over his back and then take it between his hind legs. So we're finding we're discovering a little bit of a problem here, right? Is it we need to work on that yeah. hand in? Yeah. Very good. And so when you discover something like this, you just don't go, oh, he doesn't want to do it. You you've got to work on it until they completely do whatever you want. And this is the hard part. You're working more than he is and sometimes it, that's the way it is but he's going to figure yeah. out that when he complies then he gets to stop being a horse is hard there you go being a horse trainer is even harder especially when you're oggy <laughs> <laughs> oh he creates his own problems <laughs> right there you go uh, uh, Dan. good very good Very good. Yep. Smaller and smaller steps he's taking. There you go. Good job. Very good. Oh, I like it. His, his lower lip got a little tighter there. Again. Oh, good. Boy. Great job. Yes, uh, keep praising him for that. Oh. Great job. You're doing a great job. Keep it up. Just do what you're doing. Boy. Nice. Good job. Nice. Okay, you hesitated, and you took the pressure off on three different very short um, movements there. It was a, it was like a tug of war back and forth where he started to move. He took the pressure off, praised him, uh, or didn't praise him, but told him, gave him a cue, and then started moving again. He moved. You did the same thing again. You did that three times in, a, in about his uh, second and a half, which is perfect because he still didn't move. You accomplished what you wanted to do 
but you released the pressure, then put the pressure on, you praised him for it. Outstanding. Good job. Let's do that. Let's get really okay. greedy and do that one more time, and then we're going to move to the other okay. side. Leave him a little. Oh, look at all that chewing. Yes. <laughs> chewing and licking. I comply. I understand. You're the boss. Yeah. Good job. Yeah. Oh, you're doing the old dreaded tarp S turn around the legs. That'll kill a horse every time. <laughs> good boy. Very good. Look at that. Completely attention on the um, He knows what's going on. Very good. I like that a lot, Nicole. That is some really good work right there. Very good. So let's go to the other side then and just keep doing this. Well, let's turn him around. So let's swap in so the camera can see you on this side. And it also makes him move to where you want him to do, or where you want him to be, and then not move because you're doing all the work on him. See the psychological thing that goes on right there in his head? Is that you mm-hmm. moved him, he's got to move, and now he's got to stand where you want it, where you wanted him to be. So very good. And let's just, I'm going to shut my mouth for a little bit and I'll let you go through the paces and I'll let you, let you correct and, and, and fix yourself. Tell, tell us what, what, uh, when something goes right or when it goes wrong, I want to hear you tell us why it happened, what you did. Okay. Good job, buddy. Back in there. That's okay. Right. I'm gonna whack him with it now. Ah, ah, head up. Good. Yeah, you can sniff it. That's cool. <laughs> And I think that was him resting his foot right there. Yeah, he's, he's, he's kind of, yeah, a little me. bit, but he's kind of moving forward a little on you there. But okay, <laughs> now he's now he's just kind of hanging there. That's good. That's there's, that's fine. Hey, good job. Hey, good job. One thing about horse work, it will make you ambidextrous if you're doing it right. Oh, yeah. All right. And we'll try and drop it on the other side. There he does. Good job. Lovely. Good job, Good. Augie. Yeah, you can give it a nibble. Cool. <laughs> I'll see if I can grab it on the other side. I think he seemed pretty relaxed so far. I don't see anything. I don't seem fighting it. (laughs) And you've done a thorough job on the other side, so the learning curve on this side is, is they still have to learn, but it's a little bit shorter. Yeah. There you go. Good job, Augie. Good boy. I think he's more interested in Jack's right now. Yeah, he's pretty, pretty unconcerned about it. That's good. That's really good. Look at his front leg. Hey, good job. Okay. 
give it a little nibble. Okay. And that was my bad. I did yank on his leg. Yeah. Bit. Yep. Good. You, you felt it. See it. There you go. Sometimes it, they will do things that, you know, you're not really understanding why. But if you really pay attention and break it down, sometimes they're moving because of what we're doing and we don't even realize it. Yeah. Yeah. So that, yeah. that was a good catch on your part. Good. Move that behind end. There you go. Good. Right there. Notice he's doing the same thing on this mm -hmm. side. Remember he did that on the other side. Like you yeah. Moved, yeah. A little less this time. He's not quite as overt about it. No. Good. No. There you go. So now one thing that instead of you jumping over there to, to stop him, use your yeah. use your lead rope to just kind of see if you can stop him that way by being in and in, in, uh, being on this side of him in spite of that instead of trying to get in front of you and stop him. See if you can just pull him back over when he does that. Just just to nudge him. Okay. And that way your communication is getting more and more subtle. There you go. Back up here. Over. There you go. There you go. You can stand right there, you big baby. Oh, good. There you go. There, good job. Good. That was so hard. So. Yep, shifting his weight. That's perfect. Good job. You're doing good. Shorten your lead just a little bit. There you go. Oh, that's okay. That works. Yeah, good job. Now just pick it up and throw it back on him. Uh -uh. Oh. Back. Back over. There you go. Very good. There you go. Oh. Very good. Much better on oh. that front end, too. You, you you kind of stopped him instead of him spinning around, stopped him kind of halfway, but at least his front end didn't didn't uh, move too far away from his hind end. Because oh. last time he just spun around, and this time he kind of stopped him about a third of the way over. That's good. There you go. Very good. Good. That was subtle. Nope. Nope. So he's going to start having the air. You're a little tantrum. Uh, yeah, don't let him go around you. Very good. Over. Good job. Back over. You can do it. I believe in you. <laughs> There you go. And hope. Hope. Good. Back over. Back. Notice how he oh, moved really cleanly over at the other direction. Yeah, he moved cleanly over at the other direction. He's just telling you no. Very good. Doing great. Hope. Good. Yep, put him over there where he started. Very good. So he wants it on that side, so bring him back over. There you go. So we got to end up on the other side of that tarp and make him move on this side. Because now, what he just, you see what he just did to you? He just put you and him on the side of the on the uh, tarp that he's more comfortable on. Oh, okay. There we go. See how he moves go. smoothly over it? No problem. Okay, now let's now let's move him back over it. Oh. And that's where that's where your fight is, right there. Okay. And if we win this, and we will, 
Very good. Then we'll we'll play with him with just a little bit more. We'll go through kind of everything in gross motor that we did on the other side. And then we'll be wrapping it up. Okay. Very good. There you go. Better. Good. That's better. That's better. Much better. All right. So just walk him around. Just walk him around that tarp. I don't care if you go behind it, in front of it. It doesn't matter. Let's put him on the other side and make him move over against it or over the top of it again. Without, let's not, don't move him this direction over it, but just place him over there and then we'll move him again. This is a one way street, not a two way street. There you go. Good. Good. I like that you're, I like you're pulling him through and turning that front end around or the hind end around it. Okay. Pull him forward. Pull him forward. You're starting to see he's still, he's trying to place you again where it's comfortable for him to step over it this way. So don't let him do that. Pull him, pull him forward and get him away okay. from the tarp. Pull forward, forward, forward. Keep going forward. There. Now turn his hind end around so he's, he's facing away from the tarp. Yep. You're, you're, you're doing right. Please, okay. pull, please head towards you. Place that hind end over. Make him go 90 degrees to where you're at. Back him up. There you go. Now let's now let's make him walk towards that tarp and and pass over the top of it. Just like straight forward or sideways? No, sideways. Let's make him side pass over it. Okay. Because that's what he doesn't want to do. He'll do it the other direction, and he keeps moving you so that you'll go that direction. But he needs to move this way. There you go. You got it. But so hard. <laughs> Very good. Your, your correction is good, and it's taking less of it overall than it used to. And he is just such a little pussy. He is just going to fight that. It's all right. Keep working at it. There you go. Better. Look at it. Much better. Good. Love Very that. good. It was it wasn't perfect, but it was much much better. Yeah. All right, good. So let's go ahead and pick that tarp up again and start working him on this side. Okay. Because we worked we worked a, a lot on that other side, but let's finish up. Do a little bit more on this side and face in that direction. There you go. Good. Place him. Let's do that. Let's just let's just place him around it. So turn his hips. So that he's 90 degrees the way he is and make him back around that tarp. That, just keep going like that. Yes, keep doing that. Turn those hips. There you go. Now back him up. Back him around it. <laughs> take, take him up to it, but don't let him go over the top of it. We're gonna, he thinks we're going to have him go over the top of it again now, and we're not. We're just going to yeah. there, and then you're going to come oh. on this side. See how you're controlling his body and placing him where he where you want him to be? You're just moving it. You are completely mm -hmm. controlling his entire body. Good. All right. So now let's go on this side, grab your tarp, and start flogging him with it. Good. That was good. That was a good relief. He started to move, and you you corrected him. And we're going to get to the, we're going to get to the point where your correction is not going to be movement. It's just going to be talking to him or selling and, and or just a gentle touch of that uh, halter rope. Yeah. Very good. Good job. All of a sudden, he thought that was going to eat him for some reason. That's good. 
Oh, uh, Jax is messing with the tarp over there. I think uh, he okay. <laughs> so the tarp that's actually on his body is less imposing than the one that's 40 feet away from you. Yeah. Yeah, that's how they think. <laughs> Good, 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 good job. Very good. His hind leg is cocked. He didn't even tighten up. Good. Move towards his flank this time. Yep. Good job. Look at that. Very good. Boy. He's shifted his weight a little bit. Barely, but he didn't take any weight off of that resting foot. Uh, uh, didn't put any weight on that resting foot. So very good. Good boy. Very good. All right, let's try one behind his, his hind end when you get this one done. Do whatever you want okay. now. Yeah, just keep keep going with it. There you go. Yeah. Look at that. Oh boy. His mouth is much, much more relaxed. All he did was now he didn't move except to just change Positions on the way to where his feet are at. Very good. Yeah. Good boy. Good. Well, here's your opportunity. Yeah. He's opened the door for you. <laughs> and he's closed the door for you. <laughs> Yeah, that's cold and slick. That's probably not. There we go. Oh, good job. Excellent. Oh. <laughs> that's okay. That's You're putting okay. a lot of pressure there on that side. That's fine. That's There's not a problem with that. Now, look, yeah. at, look at him look it over. So let's do that again until he doesn't move. Good job. You're pulling, pulling him forward. Yes, nice. Look over. There you go. You're fine. Uh, uh, Sam. Yep. Can you come back? One more. There you go. Back over. No. I, yeah, I think he was just resting his foot, but that's okay. You know what? You can be overcorrecting, and, and that's fine. Not a, that is not a problem. Look over. There you go. Back over. Very good. There you go. Right there. There we go. Yes. Okay. So I can tell by your body language, you're kind of hoping he doesn't move. Just know that he's not going to move. All right. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Look at that. Good job. Very good. Very good. See what you want to have happen and know what's going to happen. Very good. Do that one more time, Nicole. One more time. Yeah. Very good. Now throw it on his back, and then let's take it up over his head slowly. 
And if we do this without him moving, he is done for the day. And you might be too. No, you won't be. <laughs> grab your, grab a little bit more, take some slack out of that rope. There you go. Oops. All right. Good there, job. Okay. You got it. Uh, uh, uh. Very good. You're okay. Good job. Okay. Good job. Do you notice which direction he came? He, he wasn't backing away from you. He was stepped toward you. Yeah. Yeah, big difference. Thank you. He was wanting to move, but he wasn't trying to get away from it. He was trying to come towards you. So, excellent. Excellent job. That's a big change in his, his attitude. All right. Let's pull it off one more time and then cross our fingers. Nothing happens because you're going to see what you, exactly what you want to happen, and that's nothing. Yeah. You can nibble on it. That's cool. Oh, nice. Head come down. Pull it off. It. Yes. There you go. Oh, Good job. Like that is a perfect end boy to end this. Oh, boy. Let him smell it. Yeah. We will come back to this, especially if it, if it's still icy like this. This is really good work. It seems like it's yeah. like really repetitive, and it is. But look how look at the little tiny um, periods of oh, I don't want to do this, or no, I don't think you want me to do this. But you worked through those and some new things that he hasn't done for a long, long time. Uh, really, really important to to revisit those, refresh, and to fix any little bit of hesitation or uh, fear or just plain non-compliance on his part. It's, and you're doing much, much better about making him do what you need him to do with a lot less, um, more, less of a fight to it. So, um, mm-hmm. you're, you've been winning the battles and now it's, this is where the payoff is, is that you're getting to a spot where the box that you have him contained in with his mental saying, ah, I can kind of do this is getting smaller and smaller and smaller to where he's like, yeah, I, I really can't do that unless I ask her. Is that okay? Can I do that? And you're like, no. And you're like, okay. <laughs> you know, so that's that's a good spot to be, and that's where you want that horse to be. Is always looking for your uh, input of what you want. So excellent job, good job. Mm-hmm. Let's put him away. Any Thank any you. questions or any concerns or any comments on your part? Let's let's hear from you. Um. Oh, let me think. <laughs> I don't think I have any any questions. I just uh, kind of re- reiterate what you just said. Like, I feel like we had like a couple of like small battles, but like I think we quickly got over them. Yep. Um, and that's that's kind of new with Augie because I feel like whenever he picks a battle, he really really sticks with it. Yeah. Um, but today he was kind of like, okay, yeah, I guess I'll I guess I'll move on from this. So. That was really no, cool. That's ex- that's exactly right, and and he he has got the, all the time in the world to pick that battle and try to win it. But notice these were not yeah. epic battles at all. These were and they weren't even really small skirmishes. I mean, it's you're, yeah. you're more and more headway all the time. So really good job, great job. All right, let's put him away. Let's play with Jax. Great, good job, buddy. All right, I think I might just. Stick Augie in the stall real quick. <laughs> we can hang out. <laughs> and that donkey just, oh, my God, they're so smart, and they, they, they just get away with whatever they can get away with as well. Oh, yeah. Oh, Suzanne, there you go. You're off mute. Now you're back on mute, Suzanne. Suzanne is on mute. If you're trying to say something. There you <laughs> You got it. We gotta I get got now. There you go. Yeah, I was just pointing out that Gertie got at all uh, frightened of that tarp. 
She's got her nose in the head because she's on a diet. <laughs> that, <laughs> that figures. At <laughs> yeah, You can see the captains aren't afraid of that darn tarp either. No, they're not. They're good. Uh, I think that's the advantage of having them just roam around and never become accustomed to everything. Yeah, and, and really, when they have something new that they're doing it on their own, they're teaching themselves. Exactly right. And I do like having the distractions around for her training because it does mean that the horse needs to focus on you exclusively. Yep. Yep. I want that horse to listen to me in spite of what's going on because you're going to run into distractions. It's all about how they approach them and how they handle them after that. If they're looking for you for direction and you can calm them, you can get through anything. I think that's one of the most important things I learned from you and also from Con. Two yep. things, actually, uh, Brandon. That and something else you said to uh, Nicole, and that is uh, approach it as though it's going to stand there. Whatever's in your mind is what's going to happen. Yep. And if you, if you see success, you'll get it. That's exactly right. You create your own success, or you create your uh, own uh, unsuccess as well. Yeah, you know, that was really important in terms of when I had a fight with somebody like Power is to envision everything going right. Don't buy into what's going wrong. Think about what's going right and go to that. Yeah, there's something about controlling the emotion of yourself that controls the emotion of the horse, first of all. And then secondly, when you control that or you see what you want to uh, have happen, you are more likely to give cues and communication that makes that happen in that direction instead of just kind of floundering, hoping something's going to work. Exactly. I think you hold your whole body differently. You're, you it's like when you walk with a mission, if yep. you're walking from point A to point B, everybody knows that they can see it in your body. That's exactly right. Yeah. And I'm watching Nicole's body language as well. And you could tell that she was a little tight and she was hoping that he would not move. And that's why I mentioned, I was like, okay, yeah, let's see here a little bit. I'm going to, because sometimes you can't see something unless you failed at it. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. And, and, and you, you're never successful. I don't know anybody that's super successful at something the first time they try it. They might be sloppy about it and they might have gotten marginal success, but not to be really good at it until they fail a few times to figure out what they shouldn't do. And, and that's, that's kind of what, how that happens. So that's, that's good. All right. Well, let's, uh, Let's take that inner tube that you uh, stole from your parents, that, that felony theft. And because uh, the, the, co the cost of tires and rubber nowadays, it probably is well over that felony amount. <laughs> oh, well, my dad's a mechanic, so I, I think it's okay. <laughs> you know what? Your dad being a mechanic does not make your felonies any less. It just made it easier for you. <laughs> okay. Yeah. It sounds to me like you're an opportunist. <laughs> yeah, a little bit. <laughs> well, let's uh, let's grab that inner tube and take you over to the uh, the uh, uh, tie up post that you had him at last time, and we're going to need to just okay. kind of tie that uh, to the post with another rope. Have you got a, just another rope or a lead? Because we don't want to tie on. That's a wooden post that you have there next to the barn. Yeah. Yeah, we don't want to use that. He'll pull that right off. Even his side would have to pull that apart. There we go. And this may be a non-event. I hope it is, but you never know. It only takes mm -hmm. once for it to be a catastrophe if it doesn't work right. Yeah. So we just need to put that yeah in the middle there and tie a tie it to the um your your cross pole with another rope. Okay. And you don't you don't you don't want to go through it, Nicole. You're gonna you're gonna make it too you know? short and it, okay. and it yeah, so go go grab yourself another rope. And then and, and tie that literally to your post or to your your cross piece. Yeah, it, it, it's really tempting to do that, but it it reduces the amount of uh, stretchability that that has. Gotcha. Yeah, having that link up it really helps. 
and he's going to sniff it and smell it, which is fine. You know, that. You're training this horse by walking away from him, and that happens so often. Well, Brandon, that was my bad. Oh, did you did you tell her how to do that? I did. When I did this with the uh, Lonza's foals, I used a uh, bicycle pin or two. Oh. And I just wrapped it around the post, around the rail. Yeah, you got a lot a lot less of an inner inner uh, diameter on a on a bicycle. Right. Much narrower. Yep. Much, yeah. And, and it's going to have a lot more flexi flexibility that way, too. Yeah, I just left it there. That I tie them up there all the time. Yep, no, that works good. But, yeah, this big tire like this, this is this is important to... And he's a big boy. He's he's a really big yearling. He's not even a year yet. Yeah, yeah. You can see the draft on him for sure. Yeah, he's he's just almost the size of, a, of what we would consider a two-year-old of uh, just a you know regular uh, saddle horse breeding. And with that position, though, is you know he seems really curious and not afraid. And that you know what that that's part of that cold blood that draft influence. I I I, I gotta believe that you know those draft horses are generally pretty quiet animals, the cold bloods, and that's that's why this is how they act on. So I was like, oh yeah, okay. Well, the wagon's on fire. Well, I'll just pull a little faster. How's that for you? Is that fast enough? You know, we'll get this thing down by the river. We'll get the fire put out. We won't hurry. <laughs> there you go. Now, excellent. Now go ahead and take uh, his lead and and then tie on the other other side of that, and you're going to be you're going to be golden. Okay. And if he pulls back, he'll pull on that, and he'll pull it in the position you want him want it to be in. So. Don't worry okay. too much about that. I've I've had him tied up um, a couple times when I'm just like out mucking. I'll just come and tie him up, kind of leave him, just let him hang out a bit. And he yeah. hasn't done anything crazy. That doesn't mean he won't. But so far, Good. he's been pretty chill. Yeah, it, it, you know there are some horses that you can tie up the first time, and they're like, oh, okay, I get it. You know, put a little pressure on it, and uh, that's it. And there are others you can tie for yeah. months every day, and they still don't seem to, to figure it out. And it just takes right. a ton to do it. Good. Well, All looks right. a little weird, but... <laughs> yeah, it might be... No, I think you're going to be okay. I think it's, it's going to be an okay disc. Okay. It's a little bit long, but he's going to move away from it if anything happens anyway, so... And I don't. I don't have a problem. With that. Okay. Yeah. Normally, you would tie it so right. you know, the horse can't get their foot over it, whatever. But now let's just go right. ahead and walk away from it. Okay. And we we might try to induce a little spook into him. We'll give him a minute to see what he does. He's probably going to try to follow you a little bit, or at least turn to watch. He's got to. He's got to sniff it, smell it, see what's going on, <laughs> or chew on it. Yep. <laughs> Which, but that's you know what that's kind of a baby thing too that is an absolutely normal they got to chew on it lick it right. feel it <laughs> is there any is there anything in the arena there on the other side of the fence that you can kind of maybe drag towards him Let's see if we can induce um, a little I've got, I've got like a grain bag in the shed. How about just grab your, your blue tarp? Or... Let's yeah. Just, let's just grab your blue tarp and, and drag it out there and see if we can. In, we're going to actually try to induce a little spook to him. Okay. And if he doesn't, that's fine. We don't care. That That's even better. It looks like he's trying to untie your knot. Yeah, he's probably going to be successful. My knot tying skills aren't that great. This might be one of those horses that you're really glad that he doesn't have thumbs, but you wouldn't know that he doesn't by the things <laughs> we can do. Yeah. 
Teddy. Hi. There we go. You put a little pressure on it. That's good. So just go, go ahead and just wa just drag that uh, on the other side of your fence or your uh, your pole in front of him, okay. so that he backs up if he's going to. Yeah, not him. He's going to come towards it. So really shake it as you go by. There we go. <laughs> uh, this, is good. This, is, this is good stuff. Not a problem. We like that. There we go. Yep, keep it up. Keep it up. Now, he's starting to feel a little tension because he's picking that tube up. Just the weight of that inner tube is, is he's feeling it, which is fine. Yeah. So, there you go. <laughs> so just because we have a goal in mind and we're not able to achieve that goal and our whole goal really is to have him misbehave right so that we yeah. can show him that he shouldn't he shouldn't move when he's tied up but look what you're doing, and the pressure that you're putting on him is more pressure, and he's handling it bigger, better than Augie would if you'd have done that the same thing with him today to start out. Yeah. So this is just the way he's his mind is wired. So this is not a failure. This is a success that he's not spooking, which is really what our purpose is overall in in the in the big scheme of things, right? So not yeah. a problem. So go ahead and shake it now. <laughs> I love it. I love it. I'm, I'm going to say oh yes, uh, that maybe you want to go and get one of our bouncing balls. Sometimes the horses really get afraid of the, those big balls that we use in soccer. Oh. Good. Yeah, whatever you think might move him is, is, is good. I really like I really like his calmness. Yeah, I do too. So he's going to try to follow him, which doesn't surprise me. But look at that. See the tension that he put on that inner tube? <laughs> Just starting to pick it up. He feels it, and then he complies. Oh, there we go. That's good. Ooh. Ooh. He says, hey, that got really tight, and then it got really loose. How'd that happen? Good. Frustration. That's good. Like that. And I like that he's doing this kind of alone, too. He started to shift his weight back a little bit. Let <laughs> off some firecrackers. Hey. Oh, that came right at you. That is really nice. I like that. <laughs> really like that. And you know, you don't know until you tie them up and you do this how they're going to react. And so this is just a fail right. seat. You know, if you were to tie him up hard and fast, 
and he comes back, you know, he can do damage, and this is not what we're or what we're really trying to avoid. But if he doesn't do anything, that's even better. We don't have to train him to not respond. Yeah. Very good. So take the take the ball now and go completely behind him. Go over towards that little round corral, your steel round corral, and see if he tries to come with you and gets curious about being over there. And if he puts some pressure on himself, kind of like when you moved or, or left him. There we go. Yep. Oh, poor kid. Nope, not poor kid. Smart kid. He's learning. <laughs> poor kid is what makes them be right. naughty. Right, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There you go. You can see how he comes to the end of that, that tension, and it, it pulls his head around, but it, it doesn't. It doesn't really give a sharp, sudden stop. There, yeah, just it just has a little pressure. Yeah. It's like pulling a rubber band, just a giant one. Hey. Yes, I like that. See how he comes to the end of it, and he's he's looking, searching, then he hits it again and, you know, just kind of bangs it, but nothing really hard. I like it a lot. Yeah. That's, there we go. That's okay, good. Okay, good job. Look at that. He didn't, he didn't uh, brace his feet and continue to pull against it. This is good. I like it. Doing what it's supposed to do. You've got enough room there, too, that if he pulls back and really struggles against it and then all of a sudden comes forward and he leaps forward, he's not going to probably get into that post. He'll be able to stop short of that. Mm-hmm. Okay. Again, this is a little longer than you would normally tie a horse, but it this is a whole different purpose for it. Yeah. He's thinking. He's not just standing there. He's thinking about this. <laughs> yeah. I think he just made some sort of a declaration. <laughs> Look at him. Can you see see the wheels turning? There, that, that lip is moving. He's chewing a little bit. Yeah. Look at those eyes are blinking. He's trying to figure out how he can do this, and it just doesn't work. Frustration? That's okay. It's all right to be frustrated. Now he's, he's what he's trying to do is just distract himself. Yeah, and the, exactly. There he goes, picking that up. Very good. I like this a lot. He's got to face that pressure, and that's what he's doing. He tries to beat it, and it doesn't work. More distraction. <laughs> we'll get to a point here we and we maybe have already passed it where he's going to struggle so much that lower lip looks a little tight maybe it's a shadow i can't tell no i guess maybe not as bad okay it was a shadow but um if he really struggles for a little bit and then eases off then we'll give him a few minutes and if he continues to not struggle then he's done. We need to put take these really small bites because his little mind is is pretty darn fragile, and they can't take a, a lot of pressure. Okay. But he's he's already starting to comply, and he'll he'll test it and come back. Let him test. 
Yep, testing again. He says, how is it doing that? What is this thing and why? <laughs> Very good. I like how he's just standing there now, facing it, the direction of that where the pressure was. Because whatever way he turned, either left or right, whenever he pulled on that, it pulled his head right back towards that, like, like he's going to do again here. And he's smart. He's trying to get his body into it, getting some, some physics behind it to get the best advantage to pull, and it's not working for him. Good. Very good. A little frustration, that tail flip. Always important to watch their body language. They'll tell you so much about what's going on in their mind. They're no different than we are. Oh, the other direction, that's going to work. Got it between his legs, but let him. Let, don't don't worry about it. Okay. <laughs> okay. What he's going to do is he's going to just turn around and face it, and he may pull back and uh -huh. untangle himself. If he does, that's fine. Let him let it, let him go. Don't do anything. Yeah. Let him fix it. This is also another important lesson that you can stand there for hours with that thing between your feet, and it's not going to hurt you. And you'll notice now where the, the tension is, is down towards his foot. Oh, oh, oh. look at that. Look oh how smart God. he is. Look how smart that horse is. There's one problem with that. He's making, he's making that shorter and shorter and shorter. <laughs> and as long as that will unwrap, now he's got it. Now he's got it wrapped around him. So you might have to go in there and fix him. Yeah. Ooh, he almost got him out himself out of that. Oh. Just, yep. He's gonna do it. Good. Good job. Good. And he didn't panic. <laughs> he's frustrated. He's very frustrated. It's all right. Now he's going to wrap the other other leg up. That's okay, too. <laughs> the one thing about that, you don't want to be too far away, especially with a young horse like this, because you may have to go in there and save them. If they get that rope wrapped around their foot, uh, you know, a time, you know, one and a half wraps instead of just a half wrap, you might have to get in there and save them, because then if they go f and and take off or something happens, you know, then you could do some damage to a to a limb. Yeah. Now I hope he pulls back and figures out, oh, wait a minute. How's this doing this? If I just go forward, maybe I can step out of this again. There we go. <laughs> Wouldn't take him long to learn how to run with a set of hobbles on, I can tell you that. <laughs> He's, he's got go. several things going on here at once, and none of them are in his favor. He just keeps getting hit in the face with a <laughs> inner tube. He's getting his face drawn down. He can't get back. Picks his leg up. Jack's world is just falling apart. <laughs> yeah, he's gonna. He might figure this out that he can flip that leg up and over the top of that and fix himself.
And if he gives up and just stands there, that's a win also. If he's just taught him something else he has to do or can do and be nice and quiet about it. The only way you can really lose on this, and it would be a big loss, is if you injured him. Yeah. Now he's doing almost exactly the same thing he did on the other side. If he stops and just accepts it, like he looks like he might. <laughs> but at some point, if he really gives up, then we go in there and go ahead and pick his foot up and take the rope out from underneath of it and let him stand for a little bit and you'd be done. So, But let's see what he does. Yeah. Super frustration right now. But he's not throwing fits. This is really, really good. Kind of a yeah. testament to his personality. Kind of watch and see if he if he kind of gives a big sigh at some point here yeah. when he when he stands still. He may not. He's busy enough. Coming towards the pressure. I like that. <laughs> he's thinking there is no good direction out of this thing. <laughs> he's so close, too. He is very close. <laughs> well, what this actually does as well is without him blowing up, is it, you know, you could start to pick at him by a foot and have little to no issues with him fighting that because he's kind of learning how to mm -hmm. do that now. He's forcing himself to, to be constrained. There he goes. Right back in the center again. I almost wish he would pull back and straighten that, that leg out and flip it over it. But yeah. It's, okay. it's all right. <laughs> <laughs> now it's just on the other leg. And he's praising himself for how clever he is, but he's just in the same predicament on the other side. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Looked like he was about to start to back up, put some pressure on this. Yeah. Maybe not. Yeah. 
Right back where we were the first time. There, we might have to help him there, Nicole, because he's... Oh, there you go. Okay, good. Yeah, you got it again. <laughs> the only way he's going to get out of this now is if he flips himself upside down. <laughs> <laughs> and that's all we're seeing here is frustration. He's like, oh, I did it again. How did I do that? <laughs> So notice he's kind of given up on the foot and moving. So now he's just chewing on the yeah. rope. So a little bit of frustration is kind of picking up in a different way to express it. That pressure still pulls his... Even though it goes behind his leg to do it, it still pulls his face towards that inner tube. There we go. He's kind of starting to give up. You no, know, it's been right at a half an hour. Time has flown. Yeah. That's kind of a long time. So let's go ahead and go in there and save him. Okay. And praise him for what he's done, especially if he gets that is is really easy to get unhooked. Yeah, he's willing to come towards you. And then just reach and see if you can lift that foot up and put it, pick it up over the top of that. Just pull him forward. He, he will come forward. There you go. There you go. Good. Good job. Leave him chew. Very good. <laughs> Very good. I think that's it. I think that's all you want to do with him today. That was plenty. Yeah. Oh, boy, there was a big sigh, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Very good. He's, so that tension, he's kind of releasing that tension. You helped him. Nothing. There was really no fight here. I, I, You can't even call this a fight. So <laughs> that was very good. I would just put him away. Let him think about it. Very good job. Okay. Sometimes stepping away like this Ooh. is the thing to do and then just watch them and let them let them teach themselves, but is your, then it's just your job to babysit and keep them safe. Nicole, yeah. you did a great job today on both these horses. Very good job. Thank you. Thank you all for right. all your help. Absolutely. All right. And I, I think Suzanne wanted me to stick around a little bit here. Yes. I. Uh, people are asking two things, Brandon. We saw uh, a neighbor lose a calf and i wanted to show people the little video you sent me of your lovely wife and i'd like you to talk us through what happened with this calf and then there was a question about your balancing being a judge with calving and you just told to hear okay All yeah right. we're you know we're we're really getting started in our calving right now and we can, we tend to calve late to beat the weather, and this year I am really hoping this the weather that we've had from last fall to now is a drought breaker. We really need that, and uh, so we're we're calving normally at this time. It's you know not a lot of snow, and it's not super cold. We have a few a few days here and there where you know, like last year, I think I was up for about oh god, was it three days? I was up every hour. Uh, around the clock checking these calves well we're not quite in that spot right now but uh we've had some some issues with some equipment things like that and lisa and i have been feeding and the other night we were feeding and noticed a cow and a calf off to the sides so well she just had them we better go look as we came up to it, we realized she had twins so the b the, the smaller the two was near death very very close it was laid down and, and when you have an animal birds um any kind almost any kind of animal 
when its head is thrown backwards and it's arching its neck back and it is near death and it was doing that laying on its side and just slowly moving its feet like this like it was trying to move you know we call it paddling it was so close to dying that i thought well i don't know if we're going to save it or not and i i i sometimes i'm glad lisa's there but other times i worry that i'm trying to save something that isn't going to be saved no matter how uh, much effort you put into it because it just breaks her heart she always thinks that i did something wrong i should have done this and and you know you can't do that uh you got to take care of them and you got to try but there are some times when you have to just realize this this one's not going to do it there's nothing they're so far gone and i i was right at the edge of that with this this calf so i picked it up we got it in the in the side by side and she drove like a mad woman uh into in the uh to the yard and i grabbed it put it into the hot box or, or i'm sorry we didn't even do that i said this one has to go right into the bathtub so i picked it up when she parked and i i took it into the bath bathtub in the house our our master bath and she started running kind of some tepid water because you don't want to warm them up too fast and uh got him submerged or, and then just kept playing water over the top of them while i went out <laughs> sorry and i i finished feeding and then uh come back in and she had drained the water and refilled again because it was just muddy dirty and it was cool so it shows you how fast that little body was cooling down some tepid water and uh by the time i got completely done and come in and i was i was mixing some uh colostrum to get something some warm something in its belly and colostrum is as we all know for for mammals a pretty important component of milk and we, we've got artificial colostrum that works very very well some really good stuff i'm mixing that and then i pulled the calf up out of the tub and then we rubbed it down and stimulating it you know just rubbing it hard really helps to you know, kind of get some blood flow and get it moving and then we set it down in front of the fire uh we got a you know a wood stove here in the living room so we sat there on a horse blanket that we lisa grabbed and brought in set it down and we're just rubbing this calf until taking turns until we could um bring it back to life and then we were able to take it back out to the barn i think we we started at six o'clock and i think we we were finally at a spot where we could let the calf be alone um at 11 o'clock that night and then uh so we we spent five solid hours with it, but you should see Lisa is completely bruised on her chest and her arms from wrestling this calf in the. I want to show them the little video you sent me. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, this is so sweet. I tell you, I want to be in Lisa's lap. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So paper should be seeing my. Are you seeing the screen there? Uh, yep. All right. Good. Well, here's Snow White, a.k.a. Lisa, saving more babies. We hope we get this one to come around. She's starting to warm up. She's wanting to actually try to get up. At times, her eyes roll back and think you're going to lose her. And she struggles and gets more fight to her. She's sure making a lot of noise. She's probably just a couple up. So that calf is fine now. Is that not right? Yeah, uh, I'm feeding her. I got a uh, a heifer that five days prior to that. Heifers are stupid. I mean, they just, God, they just frustrate you because they don't know what they're doing. And this one, she had laid down in the snow. And I saw that I, I was, went out to check him. I checked him probably an hour and a half before. And I went out and I saw something was laying behind her and I knew it wasn't poop because cows are nasty. They'll lay down and then they just poop right in their bed. Well, this was a calf and I ran over to it. She had, she'd had this calf, didn't even realize she had it because it was still laying there. And you could tell it had tried to kick and it still had the sack on its face and it suffocated. And so I'm mad as hell at this cow or heifer because it's like, are you an idiot? You know, you didn't even try. And so this happened five days prior so she still got milk and she wanted this her her own baby and so i grabbed her got her in 
and then put her in a head catch and then uh, kind of milked her a little bit and got some of her milk down this uh, calf's throat and taught the calf how to... And when you, when you stick your finger in their mouth like this, I mean, it is ice cold. They are so froze down, they're, they're, they just can't do anything. So you're trying to get some core warmth out, as well as this outside warmth. And so I'm squirting milk, and I've got her up against this heifer that's in a head catch, and I'm milking the heifer into her mouth and finally got her uh, to uh, take a, a nipple and start actually sucking on her. And, boy, once she got some milk like she had with that colostrum bottle, she kind of started figuring it out. Um, two o'clock in the morning, not this morning, but yesterday morning, I'm going out and, and making a, a check. And what I'm doing is I'm grabbing this heifer, putting her in a head catch and letting the calf nurse. And, uh, the calf saw me coming, ran towards the head catch. I mean, this is only a calf that's a couple of days old now. And she has figured out that this is her milk, uh, her milk truck. And so she's standing there waiting for me to get this heifer in. And as soon as that heifer's in the head catch, man, she goes to town on this heifer, and she's she's getting the belly full about every six hours. So is the heifer likely to take her? Uh, yeah, I'm trying to get her to do that, and it's I'm I'm trying with a, an old school technique where uh, I had her dead calf here, and I I took the skin, I skinned that calf, and then I have placed that hide on top of this calf and tied it onto her. So that that uh, these cows and, and heifers are so uh, olfactory, sensory dependent on who their calf is. They they know the smell of their own calf, and they don't know a calf from another calf when they're looking at it. And they will walk up and and they will sniff that calf. And if that's not their calf, they'll just move on, and they will keep doing that until they find their calf. Well, I'm trying to get this scent of the her calf onto this calf so that she'll accept it. Right now, she's not too accepting, and it's it might be a lot longer time to get her to take this calf, and she may not. I hope she will, but we've saved the calf. At any rate, we can we can feed this calf with a bottle if we have to. But at the meantime, right now, she de- hasn't tried to kick her off while she's in the head catch. The calf has tried to nurse on her when she's not in it, and she's kicked her in the head. I mean, she's kicked her, thumped her pretty hard because she knows it's not her calf, right? Uh, so we're trying to change her mind about that. And, and at any rate, we'll have a bottled calf if we have to. But we've saved the calf, and with all any luck at all, then this this uh, this cow will do okay. Now, th- there is another possibility, and I don't want this to happen, and that is that uh, we have a cow lose another calf. And that can always happen. We're early in the calving season, and if that does, then what I will do is I will swap cows right away I'll let this heifer go, and I will take that cow, and I will take her calf and skin that calf and put it on this on this one to try to get the same thing to happen. Yeah, uh, uh, that generally works, doesn't it? I mean, it really does help in terms of the olfactory. It does. It, it, it's it's a very it, it's a kind of a morbid way to do it, and it's an old school way, but you know it works, and you do whatever you can to make it work. So. Um, you know, your question about how do you do this and still be a, and do a judge at the same time. And well, you know, I'm, I'm only a day and a half. Well, I'm a, a minimum of a day and a half a week at, in court. Uh, and I was then there Tuesday. I had a full day of court. I had another cow that had had a calf about an hour before I left or half hour before I left for court. And, uh, but okay, everything's successful. Calf's, you know, not on its feet yet, but at least it's breathing and she's attentive to it. And it was a heifer. I'm like, all right, I'm going to leave it alone. So I went to work, and about 10 o'clock, I thought, well, I'll check in on my cameras on my phone and uh, check on this heifer. And I noticed in the cameras that she was she was laying down. She was kind of uncomfortable. She was up and down, almost like she's going to have a calf. But I was like, well, she's already had a calf. Maybe she's just trying to uh, deliver the placenta. And then I saw her get up and turn, and I could see a leg sticking out. So she had twins. So I ran home real quick uh, during my uh, coffee break <laughs> that I was going to take, and I I didn't even shut the vehicle off. I got in there, got her in the barn, got her in a head catch, and um, was able to uh, diagnose what was going on, and that was that that, that calf, that, that second twin, had a leg back, and she couldn't pass through the pelvic, uh, the bone structure of the, of the birth canal and the pelvic girdle. 
And so I was able to push the cow or the calf back, turn the leg, and then I was able to just pull the calf out, but it was too late. The calf was, was already dead. It had, it had uh, you know, suffocated essentially inside of her because it couldn't get out in time. Yeah, wow. That's that's not all that uncommon with twins, is it? That that one of them is imperiled? Well, you, we've had we've had a good number of successful twins as well. Um, you know, the other ones delivered fine. It was just a weather issue. And then this set was was it was a leg back, so that was one of those issues that was not going to solve itself. And uh, uh <laughs> it's funny what goes through your mind. You know, you do this enough that it kind of gets to be okay i got to do this and here i am i'm wearing a really wearing nice pants and a nice shirt because i'm in court right i'm judge is supposed to be <laughs> setting some kind of example you got some you got court decorum well <laughs> i got this really nice plaid pink shirt lisa likes me to wear pink she thinks it looks good on me and uh, whatever she thinks is good with me so i thought to myself oh my god she's going to kill me if i get blood all over this shirt so i it's about 15 degrees and so i, I just pull my shirt off and I put on my OB gloves, and I go to work on this on this cow and calf, and I got them pulled, and I went, okay, now what? And I kind of let everything dry off, and I picked everything up, and, and after I had it, everything turned out, everybody turned out, and I went to the house, cleaned up, put the shirt back on, and back to back to court I went. I think it took me, I think it was, I was from the time I left to the time I come back was right at a half an hour. I did pretty good. <laughs> yeah, you did very well, and it's a straight shot south from Rygate where your ranch is. Yeah, it's all, it's about it was about ten minutes of traveling time, so it probably took me only twenty minutes to do all of that. And uh, you know, you you get handy at it, but you know what? Not of all, not all of them are that easy to solve either. And and unfortunately, of the twins, this was the bigger calf, nice bull calf, um, everything you would want. And there he is. You know, you got a dead calf. And yeah. and you're not going to save them all. And sometimes you get to them too late. I mean, there are, I always beat myself up because, you know, it's like, God, if I had just come out here 20 minutes earlier, well, you can't, you can't be out there 24 seven, you know, and you, you do the best you can and you watch them and you, you, you'll check them hourly or every two hours thinking, okay, if she's in trouble, you know, they'll go for an hour a lot of times or, or longer uh, trying to have a calf and everything works out. You just help them out, but sometimes it doesn't work. Yeah. So where are you in calving now? Are you uh you still have the majority left oh. to go? Oh yeah, the the vast majority we we've still got yet to go. We've got uh Oh my goodness, we've got only six six cows calf, six or seven, and of those we've had two sets of twins. And I I don't want any more twins. I've had you know, it's it sounds like they're a good thing, but they're not. It's I'd rather not have twins. Yeah. So we're very early into this. Well, Brandon, I just can't thank you enough for making time in your schedule to join us and talk with us. Everybody just loves hearing your stories and and thanks you for doing what you do. Well, thank you. You know, it uh it, it means a lot to to people in agriculture that that people understand what we do and the dedication that we have to it. Uh I think a lot of people don't. They don't realize. They think we're and I've been told this to my face that, well, you're just stupid. You're just a stupid rancher. You don't know anything. That's all you can do. You know, there's some pretty educated people in this field, some very, very smart people. And, uh, you know, so people who are not in it sometimes take us for granted. And, and we're trying to change that. We're trying to educate people. And, and, you know, when people get it and they appreciate what we do, we thank them. We really do. And we're appreciative that you appreciate what we do. Well, and I also want to... Uh, say that ranching requires intelligence on so many levels. A college degree is not what's required on a ranch for most of what you do, but a good mind for problem solving is absolutely essential. Yeah, and I've, you know, I had some, and there's a lot of people in agriculture that have gone to college. I think probably the majority not, but that's probably changed now over the years. But, uh, I've had some professors that were frankly idiots. And the only reason they were teaching is they couldn't do. <laughs> so, uh, intelligence, not that they were, they were, they were dumb. They just had no common sense, you know, and so it, it, it is very much about problem solving. And if you can solve problems, you can do anything. You can get any degree you want if you can solve a problem. 
Yeah, I agree. And I think you have shown some of those to us over the years, uh, fixing your equipment, coming up with, you know, crazy solutions that actually work, because that's what you have. You have to work with what you've got. You know, and I, I'm, I'm certainly no Da Vinci, but he was he's a hero of mine. <laughs> oh, that's great. Thanks a lot, Brandon. As always, it's just such a pleasure to talk with you. Well, thank you. I'm, I'm glad everybody enjoyed this. And, and I know it's a little bit longer day to day, but, uh, well, maybe, maybe we'll shorten it up next time. Maybe we won't. We'll do what we need to do. Yeah. We'll see you. We'll see you next week. Thanks so much, Brandon. You betcha. Bye, everyone. Bye.